This is my Prusa MK2S, and I've been printing on it for over one year. Yes, this is my Prusa Mark II, and we've been through a lot. I've done more than many prints on this machine, and it's still going strong. People that buy a Prusa will usually tell you that it's a good machine at a fair price, and I don't disagree with that statement at all. But what's harder to convey when you buy a 3D printer is how it will perform or hold up over the long haul, and that's what I intend to show today. With the MK3 now out of its infancy and rolling out into the hands of more users, I thought it would be useful to take a look at the previous generation. The Mark II was undoubtedly a breakthrough machine, although no machine is perfect. What did the Mark II lack? What could have been done differently? How's it holding up? What maintenance have I done on this machine? What would I change about the Mark II? These are all questions that I would like to have the answer to before jumping into the next generation. So let's get started with the learning curve on the Mark II. The MK2 comes with auto bed level, skew correction, and a PEI sheet for a print surface. These were the biggest things that I had to get used to. The PEI sheet really didn't stick to prints that well at the beginning, or as good as I thought it should have. After a few prints and wiping it down with some alcohol, I was able to dial in the proper amount of squish to start getting good prints. And that takes us to the auto bed level. As you change out filaments and you go to different temperatures, things start to expand and that changes how the probe interacts with the bed. So I found myself when switching to other materials doing a lot of Z height adjustments on the fly. But fortunately on the Prusa, that's pretty easy to do with the live Z adjust feature. The changes are somewhat predictable, so you start to get the feel of how much the offset needs to be changed, say from going to PLA to ABS back to PLA. And then we come to the auto skew black magic. At first, it was just get some measurements of the frame, hit the button, and hopefully the printer tells you you did a good job. After a lot of reading and the printer telling me that I was slightly skewed over and over, I started to really take a hard look at what the printer was doing during this process. Once you realize how sensitive the spots on the bed really are, it makes it a lot easier to adjust the frame to where it really should be. And then you can get that all too satisfying congratulations message. The firmware updates have really helped as well. You can now see how much the printer is skewed. If you scroll all the way down to support, and then all the way to the bottom of that menu, you can get your calibration details. The first screen gives you an idea of the front of the machine and how it's aligned. This is the distance from the probe to the Y minimum end stop. And if you click again, the top line will tell you the degree of skew of your printer. Mine is 0 0.02 degrees skewed. Below that, they give you an example of what a slight skew might be, 0.12 degrees, and a severe skew, 0.25 degrees. So after we got used to each other, I started printing a lot. I was printing on this machine at least once a day for six to seven months straight. I still use this machine three to four times a week, so it's basically been my go-to 3D printer since the beginning. Most days, if you're not switching out filament a lot, it's just send it a print, wait for it to finish, remove the print, rinse and repeat. Of course, there's going to be failures, but in my case, it's mostly user error. This machine has only been out of commission seven days since I've owned it. And that brings us to maintenance. So far, the biggest failure on this machine has been when the heat bed plug burned up on the board. The plug, socket on the board, and wires were so well cooked, they were no longer usable. I received this printer at the end of March 2017, and the plug burned up at the end of October 2017. I built this one from the kit, so I didn't have any support, but in Prusa's defense, I had been running this machine really hard for seven months. I've had the heat bed up over 110C many, many times, and ran this printer in a heated enclosure at 65C for hours on end. So I clipped the wires, soldered them to the back of the board, and I was off and running again. As far as other replacement parts, I've swapped out one nozzle, one heat block, one barrel, one heater cartridge, and one thermistor. On more than one occasion, I've had a huge amount of failed print stuck all over the heat block. That, paired with normal wear and tear, was probably the demise of all these parts. I started to notice some under extrusion on my prints, and when I went to investigate the barrel, I noticed the heat break was bent. So I started taking things apart, things snowballed from there, and led to all these replacement parts. I'm also on my third PEI sheet, 
but I learn from part removal mistakes a little slower than others. It's always good to have a spare sheet on hand. I've also had to recover from a few filament jams, but it's always after a filament reload. Remember, always extrude some filament before pulling it out, kids. So what could have been done better on this 3D printer? For me, in my opinion, at that time and place, nothing. Sure, filament sensors and power panic are awesome, but I wasn't concerned with those things when I bought this 3D printer. At that time, I was so focused on getting perfect first layers and having a repeatable 3D printing process that nothing else mattered. Any other features would be just gravy. It would make a good thing even better. So at that time and place, this machine filled the bill 100%. My only complaint about this printer is the same one I had on the first day and the same one that I have today. And that's the noise. It has just the right resonance on the Y carriage that you can hear it all over the house. If it was just a little quieter, I'd probably run it even more than I do now. So as you probably guessed by now, I love my Mark II, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. But now we have the Mark III, and my hope is, as I jump into the Mark III experience, that Prusa has just taken a good thing and made it even better. Sure, removable print surfaces and other features are great, but if it takes away from the experience that I had on a previous version of that machine, it's not really an upgrade. Only time will tell, and remember, the Prusa Mark II kits are now cheaper than ever. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Time to get back to work, Mark II.